are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So it looks like we've taken another step in the direction of North America today. I'm just about to book some flights. It looks like I'm flying into LA. I'll have to go LA to Vancouver and then Toronto and then into New York. The flights from Sydney to LA return like 1200 Australian dollars. The flights from Australia to fucking Vancouver is like $2,500 and like 44 hours. You can get it cheaper, but I would have had to have flown with an airline in Australia called Jetstar and every single one of their fucking flights gets delayed. And I would have had to have connected in Honolulu with WestJet to get to fucking Vancouver. And there was a three-hour fucking buffer there. And on a Jetstar flight, you can lose fucking three hours pretty fucking quickly. Some fat guy having an argument at the front desk on his cancelled flight. It could be anything. So it's just not worth the risk. And they were a lot cheaper. They're like half the price of the other flights. But you're fucking, you're playing Russian roulette. So flying into LA, $1,200. And then one way ticket to Vancouver is like fucking $63 up to like $130. So it's fucking cheap regardless. So saving almost $1,000 by flying directly into LA. And then from Vancouver, get to Toronto any way I can. And then fucking Toronto into New York. I think one of the fucking listeners said he would drive me to New York. I'll take, I'll take you up on that. So it's looking like I haven't fully booked yet. But it's looking like I fly into LA on the 1st of December and fly out of LA 19th of January. That's a fair stint. That's going to be some serious podcasting. So what it looks like is going to happen is my wife goes to India. She spends a couple of weeks in India, drops the kids there, meets me in New York on the 13th of December. We spend like three, four, five days in New York, whatever the fuck we want, and then fly into Costa Rica. That wasn't the original plan. The original plan was just go to Mexico, then bounce over to fucking like Nicaragua and El Salvador and shit. But the way it's set up in Central America is a little bit fucked. So the only way I can really feasibly with fucking ticket prices and that get into Nicaragua is to fly into Costa Rica and then catch the bus in, and then bus everywhere else from there. So that will be Nicaragua, hopefully Guatemala, El Salvador, into Mexico, and then I think we're going to bounce out in Texas, and then either, I don't know, it hasn't been locked in, none of it's been locked in, and this is costing way more than I had anticipated. So, I better sell some fucking tickets. (laughs) The ticket prices aren't going to be cheap, by the way. It'll be somewhere in between Louis C.K. and Chris Rock, all right? No, I'll keep them down and sell t-shirts after the show. Fucking lots of t-shirts. Anyway, I'm fucking excited now. My wife's already fully booked. She's going regardless. I haven't booked anything yet. I need to look at my Canadian visa too. But the good thing about flying into LA and then into Vancouver is if I get rejected at the fucking border, I'm pretty sure Canada will just send me back into the US instead of back to Australia. So that's sort of a win-win. It's cheaper and if I get deported, it will be into the States. So it's all good. I'm fired up now. So that hopefully will be done tonight. I'll get that booked up and locked in, and then I can start planning everything else, get everything else locked in. Having some direction really does change your mood. I'm fucking excited again. Anyway, it's another Monday. We are here at Monday, and you know what that means. It's Ask Boyle time. So if you have a question you would like answered by one of the greatest minds of the generation, then head to my website, boylecomedy.com. There's a section there for Ask Boyle. I think fucking drunk dials down again. People have been trying to send in drunk dials. They're not coming through. Kevo, 
Kev, what's going on, mate? So fucking just write it in for now. While you're there, while you're writing in your question, just fucking go sign up for that Patreon. I released the Patreon potty today. I'm going to need some of that Patreon fucking cashola to get me through this fucking North American tour. That's for sure. So sign up to the Patreon, ask a question, go there, buy a fucking t-shirt, do everything you can. Anyway, let's get to this week's fucking question. So this week's question was sent in by my man, fucking Marty McTaylor. Was subscribed to the Patreon for a while, then felt like he'd been slighted because there was no content coming out. Now I'm releasing content on the Patreon. He's joined back up and he's got a question. So here it is. Can you explain how the theory works when you drink loads of beer without having a piss, but then you have one piss breaking the seal? You then need a piss literally every beer you have. Well, Marty McFly, you have come to the right place. I fucking used to wonder that myself. Not even just the breaking the seal thing. Like, where is all this fucking beer going? It's not all getting pissed out. Where is it going? I know I'm burning a little bit off as fuel, but I feel like there's a lot that's unaccounted for. (laughs) And where the fuck is it going? And not only that, you drink 15 fucking pints and you wake up in the morning and you're dehydrated as fuck. You haven't got a fucking drop of water in your mouth. Where is all this liquid going? (laughs) It can't be all going into dancing and singing. It can't all be going into abusing fucking security guards and bouncers. There's a discrepancy and I'd like to know where it goes. But the breaking the seal thing, fuck, I used to sit there and I think it was around, I want to say eight pints, but I think that's me just exaggerating my feats of strength back in the day. But I'm pretty sure it used to be like at least five or six pints before I needed a fucking piss. That's a lot of fluid. And I used to try and hold on as long as I could because I used to get a bit of uh, the old stage fright and it was always (laughs) a fucking nightmare trying to fucking go to a toilet in a busy place and pretend you're waiting for a cubicle to do a shit and just staring at your phone, staring down because all the other guys know what you're doing. They're like, that guy must have a tiny cock. And you look at them and you're like, no, it's not that. It's not that. <laughs> it's not. I need I need to do a shit. I had a big meal before I came. It was a beef vindaloo. I I'm not hiding anything. And then you see the dude 14 more times. Yeah, I got the runs. I think someone did a joke about that years ago. So I used to hold off as long as I fucking possibly could. So it might have been 8 pints, but that seems excessive. But yeah, as soon as I fucking broke the seal, it was over. Once you break the seal, you can't even hold on. You can't even put it off for like a minute. It just breaks the barrier. It just lubricates your urethra, I think. And it just... (laughs) I think it must... I think that's it. So this is the way I think it must work. Before you break the seal, there's like grip in your pee hole in that tube. It's the urethra, isn't it? Or is that just the opening? Or is that the vag? I think we know what's coming this week's Boil Breaks history. So you've got the fucking pee tube and it's all dried out. So it's sort of like gripping (laughs) itself. And you can use like your dick muscles to like keep it shut. But as soon as you break the seal, all the grip goes and it's all lubricated inside the pee hole. And it just sort of pushes its way out. You can feel it. Like once you've broken the seal, the next time you need to pee, you can feel it more towards the tip. (laughs) Can't you? But before you break the seal, you're holding on and it feels more towards the base. It feels like it's blocked off towards the base. That's because when you break the seal, it lubricates the inner tubing. That's how it works, 110. I want to know where all the booze goes, though. I want there to be some fucking experiment. A guy drinks, like, fucking 10 pints. More. 20 pints. He's got to get fucking maggot. He's got to pass out. Blackout. And I want him to fill up a bucket with, like, a measurement thing. 
and see what the discrepancy is. Because I know if I tried to drink 20 pints of water, it'd be fucking over by fucking pint three. That's why I fucking hated light beer. It's just pissed the whole time. Anyway, I think we fucking hit the nail on the head with that one. No more investigation needed on that one. It's all about tube grip. (laughs) Inner dick tube grip. That's what breaking the seal is. Anyway, cheers, Marty, for sending in that question. Thank you for signing up to the fucking Patreon as well. That'll do it for today, and I'll see you the fuck later.